Dr. Eisenhower, Hadassah and I, and Dr. Blackwell. Um, we have just a couple of like announcements that we thought that we would make that would just be helpful um, reminders for you guys. So I'm gonna let Pam go because she has another meeting um, that she needs to go to. Okay, thank you, Julie. Um, I second what she says. I definitely miss seeing all of you guys. Um, that's the best part of my job is meeting with you guys, sitting isolated in my house on Zoom. <laughs> it's definitely not my favorite, but we're doing this all together and we're here to help support you guys um, in any way we can. Um, I know we're still chugging through the fall semester, starting week seven. Hopefully everyone's, you know, doing okay and things are going well so far. Um, registration is coming up. Uh, registration is set to open up the week of August 22nd or 26th. I'm sorry. So I wanted to go over just a couple things to hopefully make that registration process smooth and easy for everyone. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. So if anyone's on a phone, cell phone, um, hopefully you can see it. I know it'll probably be small. Um, so what you guys should be seeing is my PNW portal. Um, you guys should be familiar um, with your PNW portal um, because most of you, I think I looked at the ones that are logged in, um, aren't freshmen. Um, but if you're not, I'm just going to go through a couple of resources in here, some new things that have changed and that we've added. Um, if you click on this financial aid tab, it's going to give you guys all the information you guys need for your financial aid purposes. Um, this again is my PNW portal, so it doesn't have as much stuff on there um, that you guys have on yours. Um, typically, you guys should be set for the spring semester. You usually sign financial aid plans starting with fall and it goes for the full year, which would be through spring. Um, however, depending on when you started or if you took any semesters off, um, I always encourage you guys to make sure you speak with and check all your financial aid stuff. Um, sometimes I think it feels like it's not real money because you're just signing pieces of paper versus opening your wallet and handing out cash. Um, so make sure you're checking on everything, make sure everything's accurate. Um, all the financial aid's contact information is in here. If you kind of scroll down a little, there's a box at the bottom that says ask a question and it has all the financial aid's contact information. Um, I was surprised, but I was speaking with a couple of students last week and they didn't realize that the campuses were actually open. Um, so campus is open. So if you need to stop by campus for any reason, you definitely can do so. Um, if you are looking to meet with someone, make sure you email or call them and schedule an appointment ahead of time um, because kind of each office and department is doing their own thing in terms of face-to-face -face appointments. Um, but financial aid's contact information is on there. And the majority of your financial aid information should be under this box that says financial aid requirements. Um, you'll click on the financial aid status and progress um, kind of links in there um, to get some information about your personal plan. Um, I do not have any access to any of your guys' financial aid stuff, so unfortunately I can't really help with any questions um, with financial aid, but if you want to ask me, we can try together, but typically I'll recommend you and refer you to financial aid. So in terms of registering for classes, um, you're going to click on this registration tab here at the top. Um, it would be the second or third tab. Um, some of the shortcut features are over here on the registration shortcut box. Um, so things like view your registration status will take you to see exactly when registration will open up for you. Um, as many of you probably know, registration is priority registration at PNW. So what that means is typically seniors, athletes, and students in the Honors College will open up on Monday for them, and then it'll go down the line. So then it'll be like juniors, sophomores, and freshmen. Um, so you want to check that registration status link to see exactly when it's going to open up for you. Um, when they determine your status, it is based on completed hours. So they do not look at anything that you're enrolled in for this semester. So if once you complete classes this semester, that'll bump you up to the next status. Unfortunately, that doesn't count for registration because those classes have not ended yet. Um, once you determine when registration will open up for you, it should give you down to the second um, in terms of time. Um, check the view holds link to make sure you don't have any holds on your account um, so that when registration does open up, you are able to then log in and register for classes. Um, at the end of every semester, you can click on the view grades link to get your official grade report. Um, and then you guys are probably aware of the schedule options here to view your schedule. Um, once you register for spring 21, you'll actually be able to click on that view schedule and view concise schedule, and you'll be able to look at your fall schedule and your spring 21 schedule. Um, the last thing I like to point out is this view unofficial transcript link. Um, if you ever do need your official transcripts for things like um, when Dr. Blackwell asks you guys to um, get your plans to study together for student teaching and things like that, um, you do have access to your official grade, uh, your official transcripts there um, if you do need them. Um, the next kind of new feature that I want to point out to you guys, new, um, I guess, software or system that PNW um, has is something called DegreeWorks. Um, under that registration tab, there's this yellow box here that says my PNW plan. 
And if you click on the link that says launch my PNW plan, it's going to la launch you into a system called DegreeWorks. Um, in that degree work system, um, there's going to be a bunch of different options there. Unfortunately, I don't have a dummy account to show you, um, but when you open it, it's going to be, it's going to list your contact information across the top. And then right underneath that's going to be three tabs. Um, one tab will say worksheet, and that is really like your degree audit. So it'll list all the classes that you need to take in order to graduate. Um, the next tab will say plans. Um, and that is your personal plan of study. And I only have like four or five more students or candidates that I need to update their plans of study. Um, but your plan of study should be fully updated with what classes you have remaining. So it'll list what you're taking fall 20 semester and then what I anticipate you to take for your remaining semesters. Um, those of you that are very far in the program, you probably don't have a lot of options and that's what you have to take. Um, other candidates who still have gen eds and things like that, um, I don't know, for example, I don't know when EDCI 335 is going to be offered, nor do I know when Math 137 is going to be offered. Um, so it is just kind of a, a plan to give you guys an idea of what to look at. Um, things may need to be adjusted once we figure out what days and times classes are going to be offered. Um, every other school or department would hate for me to say this, but I'm always going to tell you guys to make your education courses a priority. Um, typically, the general education courses that you guys do need are usually offered every semester, um, if not every other semester. Um, and a lot of times um, we have options of when they can be taken. Um, the plan of study that we set up for you guys, the gen eds that are further down on the plan of study, we typically put there because they usually always have an online option. And we know logistically um, it would work with your schedule if you had to do this class as a true distance learning course. Um, times are very different now. so. <laughs> It's very different um, when we come time to scheduling for classes. Um, we will still offer the same modalities for the spring 21 semester. So when it goes time to register, if you guys click on this registration tab and then you'll click on register now, um, I'm going to have to select the browse feature because spring 21 schedule is not up. So I'm just going to show you an example of fall 20. Um, but once registration opens up, you're going to click on the link that says register for classes. Um, the registrar's office told us that um, starting next week, the browse feature is going to be available for spring 21 classes. I always tell students a week before registration, so I always tell everyone the week of August 19th, uh, just in case something happens and there's a hiccup in the system. Um, but supposedly starting next week, you guys will be able to use this browse feature to start looking for classes and get your schedules kind of put together and planned out for spring. So when you click on the browse feature, again, you'd select spring of 21, but that's not up there, so I'm going to select fall 20. You'll hit continue. Um, and then you're going to enter your criteria for your classes based on your plan of study. Um, if you need me to email you a copy of the general plan of study, you can, but again, you should all be on your degree work. So that under that my PNW plan on your uh, PNW portal, um, when you go to hit launch, it'll log you into your degree works plan and should list all your classes there. But if you need any help, please let me know. Um, typically, I tell candidates not to filter by campus, especially with the different modalities um, of classes being offered this semester. Typically, you may be able to take something in Hammond if it's offered as a distance learning course. Um, so I usually say for your education specific courses and gen eds, I would just leave that blank so that you have your more search feature options. Um, then in the subject area, you're gonna type in the subject for the course. I'm gonna do an education course because I wanna show you guys or remind you guys how to see what days and times field are. So you'll type in the course number. Um, instructional methods, those are the four modalities of instruction that are being offered this semester. So face-to-face, um, hybrid, so typically that's where you meet face-to-face -face sometimes and online sometimes. Um, fully remote um, is what used to be distance learning. And then virtual classroom is where you have to log on at a specific day and time to, for example, Zoom um, and do a live lecture via Zoom. Um, again, I wouldn't filter by that for your education courses because typically there's one option um, for your education courses, so you'll pick that option. Um, other classes, such as your history courses, you guys can kind of have different options in there and, and kind of search that way. So then I'm going to go ahead and hit search and it's going to pull off all my options. Um, anytime under the status column, it says linked. That means there's two components to a class. Typically, it's your education field based courses and things like your labs, your sciences that have labs. Um, so if you ever see the status column, it says linked. You can also look under the course title, which is the first column, and it says lecture under the first row and under row two and three, it says laboratory. So that gives you another hint that there's two components to a course. Um, I always tell candidates to find the lecture that works best with your schedule. Again, a lot of the education courses, there's probably only one lecture, so it's really easy to pick. Um, again, this is what's happening now, so you can ignore the days and times and things like that. Um, but in order to determine what days and times you guys will be in the field, um, you're going to click on the laboratory course title, 
and this additional dialog box is going to pop up and you're going to select course description and it's going to tell you right here the days and times you'll be in field so this says field will meet on tuesdays wednesdays thursdays 8 to 11 30. Um, you guys obviously won't know your sites yet you know you'll find out your sites um, after the semester typically after the semester gets started um, you guys usually don't start your field classes until about week three um, of the semester i'm going to go ahead and stop sharing so you guys can see everyone. Um, so again, registration opens up the 26th of October. Um, I am finalizing all your updates on your degree works plan. So please log in and take a look at those. Let me know if there's any issues or anything weird that you see. Um, the plans on there, anyone that started prior to fall 2018, the degree audit or the one that's labeled worksheet, um, won't have your required classes on there. It's only going to have what you took because it was too hard for us to upload we tried not to make the system overwhelmed. So we just didn't, PNW just decided not to upload um, degree audits for those students, uh, candidates that started prior to fall 2018. Um, but if you notice anything seems weird, there should be, you know, you've completed biology, but it looks like you still need it. Let me know and I'll take a look and I'll let you know if it's just because of when you started and what plan of study you're on, or if I need to put exceptions in for those, but I'm trying to make sure everyone um, is accurate. And then the plan tab will have a breakdown of what I anticipate you take each semester. Um, Else. I'm going to start working on getting overrides and things like that in there um, so that you hopefully can register for classes without any issues. But if you get an error message, just email me with what the error message is and what class you're looking to try and register for. Um, I try to get them all in, but some of them have really weird prereq errors like Earth science, for whatever reason, has an override error, and there's no way for 365 students I'm going to go and put overrides in because not everyone needs it. Um, so if you do have any error messages that come up, just remember that you're probably getting it. Most of the other students that are trying to register for it are getting it as well. Um, CASA is going, so if anyone um, needs to take CASA, Ms. Shelley has all the CASA dates up there, so make sure you get yourself in and start scheduled for CASA. Um, same thing with core if you're getting close to student teaching uh, Shelly is sending out those voucher codes for you to start scheduling um, your core licensure exams. Uh, PNW is not a certified testing center for core so you will have to go to a certified testing center. Um, so you want to contact those testing centers to make sure that they're open and things like that. Um, but Dr. Black will probably be able to touch on that. What else? Any questions? I think most of you, I'm looking to see who's here. Most of you are pretty, you guys know what you're doing. You probably could train me. <laughs> okay, well, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Um, I'm gonna stay on until about 3.55. I have another meeting at four. Um, but if you guys have any questions or concerns, feel free to email me. Um, I'm gonna follow up with you guys, hopefully, with individual emails about what your next field-based courses are. Cause I know this semester, um, some of the stuff went out of order per se. Um, so if anything comes up, let me know, but you guys are doing very well and we're in this together and let us know how we can help support Thanks so much, Pam. You're always so full of good information. So uh, for those of you who I haven't met yet, I'm Dr. Eisenhower and I serve um, for, uh, as the Associate Director and I work with Dr. Gregory closely. So between me, Julie, Pam, Hadassah, and Dr. Blackwell, um, at this moment, I don't know that we have any other announcements to make. Um, those of you who are scheduled to begin your professional year in January, that would mean you'll be student teaching in the fall of 21. Your student teaching applications were actually due on Friday. So if we have not yet received your student teaching application, now is the time to shoot Hadassah, um, either your application completed or some explanation of why it is um, late and when we can expect it. All right. Julie, Hadassah, Dr. Blackwell, announcements question, uh, from any of you? Uh, I think that the majority of the information has been shared. Um, I will just say that um, now that registration is getting ready to start, I will be um, starting with um, field placement again for the spring semester. And um, we are also working on um, finalizing um, student teaching placements for the spring. And um, we are working on the professional year placements, which are for a whole year. We will have, um, virtual 
professional year interviews, just so that you guys have um, the experience of an interview. And um, with COVID, most interviews are happening um, in a Zoom meeting anyway. So um, you guys have had lots of practice with that. <laughs> and, um, you know, we're just continuing to work on things. Um, this semester, we had um, really a lot of luck placing everybody for field and student teaching. Um, I'm hoping that next semester that we have um, the same success. Um, I, I'm hoping to get everybody um, placed before the flu season gets into full swing because I think that might make everybody nervous. Um, but other than that, you know, we're, we're still moving ahead. We're just doing things um, a little bit differently, but you guys will still be able to continue um, in the program. There shouldn't be um, any delays for you. It shouldn't delay graduation um, or you're moving forward in the program um, because we'll, we'll find a way for you to satisfy the requirements that you need, even if I have to be creative. <laughs> So um, this, as I said at the beginning, this forum is really for you guys. So does anybody have any questions? I have a question. Um, I was wondering where can we um, go to take like the practice test for, Ca for CASA? Cause I, it took me like a while to get to like the education department cause apparently it moved and I went up there and I was just a little lost, so. Great question. Um, so I do apologize, we did move. Um, anyone that's been to the Hammond campus, the annex building is no longer there, it's torn down, it looks like grass and you never know there was anything there. Um, so we are now in the CLO building, the classroom office building, which I don't know how they got CLO from classroom learning building, but whatever. Um, so we're in the CLO building and we are on the third floor. Um, at the Westville campus, we're still in Tech 205, um, which Hadassah kind of runs that area. So depending on which campus you're at, you'll either just contact Hadassah or Shelly Colapanis and I'll put their contact information in the chat. Um, unfortunately, because the way things are right now, normally just walk in and you can use the practice exams as you want. Um, but because of COVID, we can't unfortunately have a ton of you in the rooms together. Um, so you do have to schedule an appointment um, with Hadassah or Shelly, depending on which campus you want to go to, um, to come in and use those practice exams. But we do have all the practice exams for CASA as well as CORE. So feel free to stop in um, and schedule an appointment to use any of those. You can purchase them on your own if you want. Um, Pearson's website does have a few study practice questions on their website for each of those exams. Um, and other candidates have said that they have found stuff on Amazon that they purchased to help them study as well. Um, so yeah. And someone in the chat had a question about um, the student teaching application. If you are supposed to be student teaching in January, um, you do not have to fill out another um, application. We have your materials on file. Thank you. I have a question, if you don't mind. Go ahead. For those of us um, student teaching in fall, the, the student teaching application, where can I find that? So Hadassah should have sent that to you. So if you did not get that, Jenny, then um, send an email to Hadassah um, asking for it. I know she's on this call, but um, it's nice for her to get an email because she'll just hit reply and send you the link. Her, her email, she just posted it in the chat box. So you can- I saw it, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. I have a question. For the, yes. for the core tests, is there a specific schedule we should be following for uh, when we take each one? So th there is, um, a, I mean, there's not exactly um, exact dates or things written down for you, but what we recommend is that um, we recommend that you take the core tests um, during your methods courses. So for instance, when you're taking 316, 
um, and 36204 together, which is social studies and your second literacy class. We recommend that you take the social studies and the ELA core tests at that time. And then when you're taking math and science, um, that you take the math and science core tests when you're taking the methods classes. We recommend that you take them like after you're halfway through the course um, or near the end, half like the middle to the end or just after the course is finished because then you'll have the most content um, fresh in your mind. Um, and when you, depending on the order, cause I know we've shifted some of the order, but after you begin taking your um, methods courses, you also can take the pedagogy test um, at that time. And so Shelly Colcanis sends the vouchers for that. So I know that she's in the process of sending vouchers for this semester. So watch your email. Um, and if you haven't gotten emails from Shelly, I would say by the time registration begins, you need to reach out to Shelly um, to ask about the voucher if you're enrolled in 315, 316, 36204, if you're enrolled in any of those. Otherwise, you won't be getting a voucher. Um, but she'll send those and then you just use the voucher to sign up. And something else to note, um, we cannot register you guys for this for the exam. So we're going to send you the voucher codes and we're telling you the coast number code numbers um, or test numbers that you need to register for. If you register for the wrong exam, you have to deal with Pearson, unfortunately. Um, we've had students, I don't, I don't know how, but we've had students register for the early childhood and they're not early childhood and vice versa. Um, so be, make sure you pay attention to what you're registering for because once you use your voucher code, it's, it's not us anymore. Well, we pay for the initial voucher code and we have them, but once you enter that voucher code into Pearson's website, when it comes time to paying, it's out of our control and you'll have to deal with Pearson, unfortunately. So make sure you pay close attention that you're registering for the correct exams. A uh, quick question about the core exams. And do we have to register for those as soon as we register for the classes? Or like, is there, does it matter? Like if there's a time frame or what is, so you don't want to take the core exam until you're probably halfway through the semester for that class. So for example, EDCI 316 for social studies. So you don't want to register for your, so you can't, you won't be able to register. Well, okay. You can register for the core exam early, but if you already pay for it, you're going to get a voucher code, not money from us. So you'll want to wait to register for the exam until you receive the voucher codes from Shelly Colopanis. Um, and then once you get those voucher codes, you'll want to register for the exam. Um, technically, you have a year to use the voucher codes. Um, however, you have to have all of your core licensure exams completed in order to get approval for student teaching. Um, so I don't know if Dr. Blackwell wants to touch on dates and times and things like that. Um, but so like depending on where that semester falls, you know, if you have a summer in between, you might have a little extra time. Um, but the students who waited to do CASA have kind of put themselves in a pickle um, because COVID happened. Not that anyone can anticipate that, but I would plan to take it as soon as you possibly can so you don't have any issues or any hiccups um, is just kind of some advice for me. <laughs> and the testing centers are not open full time. Mm -hmm. um, they're open with limited hours. So I would make sure that you um, log in and you take a look at the dates and times that are available um, so that you can do that. And if you need um, to schedule that, during um, your field time, then you need to let your supervisor and your instructor know um, that, that you are going to take core during that time. Anything else? I'd like to hear from any of you, especially those of you who are in the field or are taking classes in a different way. How's it going? I, I like Julie has said it, Pam has said it, we all are feeling this loss of not being able to see your faces and interact with you in person. So I'm just curious to know how it's going and um, the new things you're learning from all the different environments you're in and the different teachers you're working with. Thanks, Pam. I'll go. Thanks, Brittany. 
Um, I'm in a kindergarten classroom in Valpo right now. And it's like the kids are actually really good at like remembering their masks, which is kind of really sad. <laughs> They're good at that. But um, they have these, they don't have like social, like room to social distance really. So they have tables and there's three kids at a table and they have these like plastic desk shields that they put up. And if they have their shield up, they can take their mask off. Mm -hmm. um, but when we go and sit on the carpet, like I'll read them a story and I'll like ask them questions and they have to have their masks on. And it's so hard to like understand what they're saying. Cause like they're so little, they don't know how loud to speak and you ask them to repeat themselves 12 times and on the 12th time you're just like okay <laughs> you know, pretending you heard them <laughs> but other than that I mean it's I love it like I think I found where I want to teach I really love it there a lot that's great to hear and you know I think um you know, I would say three months ago, even two months ago, we weren't even sure that you all would be in classrooms with children. So that's especially mm -hmm. exciting to know that you're working, you know, ch with children, it's totally different than we could have ever imagined, but that you get to be with children is really amazing. Thank you. Anybody else have a good kid story? Uh well, I was just going to say I'm the opposite of Brittany. So I'm in Hammond and they're fully virtual and I'm in the second grade, which I found I really like second grade, but I don't like virtual. I, right now I have a sprained neck and I'm pretty sure it's due to being on the computer so much. <laughs> like it's, it's crazy that, that I'm struggling as an adult. So I can only imagine how like seven, eight year olds are coping with having to learn online sure it's just it's totally different than like well one that I expected but it's just totally different because you can see the difference in how kids are they don't they don't really get to pay attention as well because they have distractions at home so I'm hoping that January like when I student teach they'll be back in person and I can like experience that I mean it is nice to be virtual so then I kind of have some experience there mm -hmm. but I'd also like to like be somewhat normal <laughs> yeah wouldn't we all thanks Ashley I, I hope you feel better other questions <laughs> is there anything else that you guys want to know about testing anything I just have to say if anybody is having to take their core exams they should really start looking for scheduling now I had a hard time where I have to actually take all of mine in the same day it was the last day they had be like before the cutoff I needed so I didn't have a choice but to take that oh gosh yeah so I would just suggest to start looking now yeah that's why I mentioned the limited um, dates because some of the testing centers, literally they, they are there half day instead of the whole day or only yeah. a few days a week. Is there an area on the website that has um, all the core tests listed that we have to take? On, on the PNW website? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm looking, hold on. I was going to say, I don't know if I, we've added some things. We've been trying to improve the website for you guys. And um, I know that um, the list is on that, you know, that pathways document that looks like a little sidewalk, like a Candyland board. Yes. <laughs> How's that? It's on the Candyland board. Board. Okay. Um, so um, if you are not able to get into the office to get that, do we have that electronically? I was going to say, share? yeah, so, um, I was going to say, this is Dr. Blackwell. Um, I was going to say that we do have that because we have that on one of the slides where we were covering that information and some of the orientations 
Um, so we do have that electronically that we can that we can send or share to share with them. Yeah, I can send it to you, Brittany. Thank you. Yep. Does anybody there else need it? Just raise your hand. I'll put you on my list. Claudia, Claudia needs what's it. your last I'm name? Gonna, I don't see the right button on my screen to do it, but yes, I need it too, please. Okay, can you remind me of your last name? Because I only see your first name on here. Soto, S O T O. Thanks. Anything else that anybody has? I'm going to add to the chat box. I found a link on our website that it has all of it about core and CASA. So oh, good. take a look there. And of course, if it doesn't give you what you need, let us know. All right. Well, if there aren't any other questions. We want to thank you for your time this afternoon. And we, um, we hope to do this again, perhaps as we get closer to the end of the semester, when we'll have information about, you know, um, professional year interviews and maybe a little bit more information about what's happening for the field in the spring. But um, before I let you go, any, anybody have any questions? All right, well, thanks again. Please um, reach out to any of us if you have questions, especially as registration gets closer or um, as, if you're starting to be concerned about student teaching. All right, all right. Good luck to everybody. Thank you all. Bye guys.